bless you all. You know, we've been talking about the attributes of Jesus. And I've said that we can't talk about Jesus without something happening. And this is already, this is going to be our third week. And we started off the attributes of Jesus with the Good Shepherd, hearing the call of the Good Shepherd, hearing his voice. I want to tell you that when, you, when God speaks, you need to listen. I don't know how many of you, God spoke to a lot of people that night, I mean that day. I hope whatever God spoke to you or during that week, I know God was going to speak through people through the word as they read the word. And people might say, well, God didn't speak to me. So my question is, did you read the word? And I'm not talking about opening up saying, oh, and Jesus cried and closing the book. Read the word. My people are condemned because of their lack of knowledge. Because they don't read what God is. God has a word for us. Every day. Every day. He has something for us. The second week, yes, last week we spoke about God's gift. And that was Jesus, our Savior. Today, we're going to be talking about believe. That's the title, believe. And what we're to believe in. Is what God can do with you and through you. We sometimes don't understand what God can do through us. And it has to do with miracles and healings. That's the that's the the theme of today, which is the miracle and healings of Jesus. Words have power. I think it was last week I almost made every one of you deaf by screaming into the microphone. But words create in emotion, when we, like we said, when you scream, it's all your whole body. So, you know, when we pray, I'm not someone who kind of, you probably know because when I pray, I'm kind of loud. That's why I like, and no offense, sir, I like praying alone because I, I know that I bother people when I pray. Um, but I, when I pray and grew, I try to tone it down, but it's hard because I like praying. I like screaming to God, not I'm screaming at God. Let's make that clear. Screaming to God. And why do I? Not, and when I say scream, I mean just pouring everything out, pouring everything out. And when you pour everything out, you can't do that. Quietly, you can't. You can't. It's it's something that you just want to just. When you go to a game, right? And let's say someone, you you want to, you want people are screaming from the stands. 
You know, you go to even these Christian concerts and stuff like Hillsong, people, ah! Right? You know, like, this is a man. And we go crazy over a man. But yet when we're in the presence of God, we're, you know? You know, when we, when we talk with God, and this is where I'm going to get to, Words, when we speak words, they have an effect. Words, the Bible says it's like a, our, our tongue is like a two-edged sword because it can hurt someone and help someone. How many have ever been hurt by someone speak just by a word from somebody? A mother telling their kid, I hate you, will destroy that kid. How about a kid telling your, the mother or the father that they hate you? Break your heart. It's just a word. But where is the word coming from? I want to talk that about the words and where they're connected to the source in the words that we use. Because they're connected to a source. When we talk about hate, you know, it's okay to hate. The Bible says it's okay to hate. We're going to get into that a little bit. But I want to start with uh, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 9. When we speak to someone in anger, To, to someone that we know. We have to see where the root is. Is it root? Is the root in something evil? When we speak to someone in anger? Where is it coming from? In 1 John chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother or sister is still in the darkness. Well, there it says that what? Hate is what? It's part of darkness, right? Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother or sister is still in the darkness. How many have ever said they hate somebody? Yeah, lying. I know, I've, I've said it. At some point or another, I can't be the only one, that at some point in your life you've said you've hated somebody. And but yet the Bible says anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Yet when we speak a word of faith or hope towards our brothers, we tap into what? The Holy Spirit. Where is it rooted from our words? See, the Bible says that we're to hate the evil things of this world. We're to hate the things of the enemy. But yet, it says we need to have that our faith, when our faith is rooted through our Holy Spirit, it grows and gives life. Look at John chapter 11, verse 32. And we're going to see a couple different stories here on how the word and where it's rooted from and where it comes from, what type of effect it has. 
And this is the story of Lazarus, and maybe most of you probably already know this story. Okay? It says in verse 30, starting verse 30, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary's brother Lazarus, who Jesus loved, it says that he, that Lazarus died. Jesus knew about it, but yet he stayed where he was. And by the time he went to go see him, Lazarus had already died. And Mary tells him, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 33 says, when Jesus saw her weeping and the, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, the Lord replied. Jesus wept. That was that verse I was telling you. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. So if that's all you read this week. Then Jesus said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind who have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But the Lord said, Martha, uh, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus says, Do, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? I'm going to hold off on this verse. Jesus said, if you what? If you, if you what? There's a secret in our walk with Christ, which is faith. And I say a secret because many people have heard the word, but don't practice it. See, part of having faith is you need to believe. If you don't believe, then where's the faith? See, I could say, I'm healed. But if I don't believe that I'm healed, I could say it all the time. I believe I'm healed. Let me take the aspirin. I believe that I'm healed. Let me go to the doctor. I believe that I'm healed. Someone put some ointment on. I believe that I'm healed and do everything but truly believe. We need to believe in the faith of the power in Jesus Christ. So Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Here's the second part to that. We believe, right? But we have to understand where our belief comes from. Who we believe in. Okay. I'll make it real simple. Give this example. Um, if I tell you. That. I'm going to give you. A million dollars. Today. Or let's say ten million. Make it ten million. I like ten million. Say ten million dollars. I'm gonna give you ten million dollars cash today. How many would really try to believe that I would give you ten million dollars in cash today? My wife is like smirking over there. She's like, <laughs> right? Ten million dollars. 
If Bill Gates was up here and said he was going to give you $10 million today, how many would believe Bill Gates? Right? Why? Because you know he has it. You know he has the ability to do it. So it's easy to believe him. See, some of us treat God like y'all treating me. Even though we say that he has it. God, you got all the power, all the strength. You can heal. You can do anything. But let me go this route just in case. Where is our faith? Where is what we believe in? Where is what we believe in? In verse 42 it says, I know that you always hear me. This is Jesus talking with God. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may what? That you sent me. See, Jesus could have easily went and said, which he says later on, Lazarus, come out. But Jesus found a teaching moment. A teaching moment not only for the people there, but for us. So that we can understand, if you want to see miracles, if you want to see a change, you have to what? You have to? You have to believe. And when he said this, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. See, our word and faith have power to give life and perform miracles when it comes from the right source. Accepting Christ as your personal Savior does not mean that you have, that you believe in the faith you proclaim. See, that comes from, and we, you'll hear me say it a billion times, that comes from relationships. How do you know Bill Gates would be able to give you the money? Because you know, you've heard, you've read, you've known about him, right? If you've never heard from Bill Gates, if you didn't know who he was, right? If you had no idea, you'd look at him the same way you guys looked at me. But because you know what he has, you know the ability of what he can do. See, until we know and believe what God can do, that's what increases our faith. So you pray to God for this. This comes true. God. Okay. God says, I believe in this, and it comes true. And I believe in this, that God can give me this, and it comes true. And he, your faith starts to increase because you trusted him, you believed in him, that he can do this. Before you know it, you're believing that he can do anything which he can but the belief and the faith cannot be watered down.
I want to go to Matthew chapter 17. And we're going to be talking about two parts of this, of this story. It's again with Jesus. It says, and when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him, kneeling before him, kneeling before Jesus, and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures, he is suffering terribly, for often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. Jesus answered, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. This is, that was Jesus talking to the disciples. So how many personally here walked with Jesus? How many here personally saw the miracles that Jesus did? And it says that Jesus, that the disciples here, this man went to the disciples. The disciples said what? They tried to cast out the demon and Guys, like, hey, listen, these guys, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. And Jesus says, "Oh, faithful, faithless, faithless," which we were comparing to the same word as believe. You didn't believe, and you got things twisted. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. The disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Believe. God's not telling you, you, we need to start somewhere. God said, all you need is the size of a grain of, must, of a mustard seed. I don't know if you've ever seen the grain of a, uh, the seed of a mustard, the, a mustard seed, if you've ever seen one. If I were to hold it on my finger, you guys would not be able to see it. We can't use... Someone else's faith. We can't use someone else's faith. In other words, we can't say, wow, Pastor Victor prayed over a guy and he was healed from cancer. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the cancer ward in the hospital and just mimic whatever he did. Because that's the relationship and the belief that, that the bishop has with God. Where's your belief? Where's your faith? We have to believe. In Acts 19, and I know I'm going through a lot of stories, but I want you to truly understand here. It says in verse Acts 19, verse 13, it says, Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. It says, Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? We can't use someone else's relationship with God to do the same thing. This relationship with God is individual. This belief that we have 
that God, what God can do is individual. I can't use your faith, you can't use my faith. You can't use my belief in God, and I can't use your belief in God. How strongly you believe in God is on you. How strongly I believe in God is on me. Imagine these guys were going around trying to cast out demons. In the name of who? In the name of who? Anybody remember? Not in the name of Jesus. In the name of Paul who uh, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. Who Paul preaches. That's like a friend of a friend. Right? I know a guy who knows a guy who can cast out demons. So in that guy's name, I'm going to, uh, you're coming, I want you go, gone. In fact, it's, if you really interpret it, 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 pretty much it's saying that the demons got pissed off. And you, what, what are you trying to do? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Our relationship with God it's personal. When we speak about Jesus, it's singular. It's through us. To do miracles or healings, you don't need a PhD. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to attend a specific church. You don't need to be Pentecostal. You just need to believe. You just need to believe. In Luke 9, 49, it says, Master, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. Imagine. The disciples see a guy driving. Casting out demons in the name of Jesus. And the, and, and, and the disciples are telling Jesus, Jesus, we tried to stop him because he wasn't part of us. He was casting out demons left and right in your name, but we, we tried to stop him and we couldn't stop him. And what's Jesus say? Do not stop him. Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is. This is a relationship, a personal relationship between you and Jesus. It's not about being in this church or that church or the other church. It's about Jesus. It's about your relationship with Jesus. That's how you know whether it's of God or not. When you see the fruit. All you need are three things. Accept Christ as your personal Savior. Have faith in the one you handed your life to and proclaim it. Done in the name of Jesus. Believing with all your heart. Now, like everything... I like to give disclaimers. There's a disclaimer. There are miracles that require a bit more dedication and, are strong, and a stronger relationship with the Father. I remember... Um, man, a long time ago. Just leave it at that. Uh, this person came up to, uh, to me and a group that I was with, and they asked us if we could go pray for um, this person's daughter because they knew that she was demon-possessed, or they believed she was demon-possessed. She was. 
And we went and we prayed. But she stayed the same way. And the pastor, who was not the pa- uh, Pastor Victor, another pastor who was my pastor, he referenced what we're about to read. And it's in Mark 9. It says, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has, it been li- has he been like this? From childhood, he answers. It has often thrown him into a fire and water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who? What is possible? Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. See, we have to, uh, last week we talked about self-analyzing ourselves. This man did a quick self-analyze and realized that even though he said, I believe, he said, help me in my The parts that in my life is doubting. Because that's our human nature. We're not used to seeing the dead risen. We're not used to seeing people being liberated in in a major way in today's society here where we live. And I I make that clear because that doesn't mean it's not happening around the world. See, we think because it doesn't happen here, it doesn't happen. We think because God's not doing something here, that God doesn't do it. There are places where the miracles are left and right. Help us in our unbelief. Verse 25, it says, When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirits. The impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and stood up. And after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive him out? And he replied, this this kind come out only by prayer. And there's, in some versions, it will say fasting. In not all versions, they have it. But in some versions, you'll see where it says prayer and fasting. Now, I want you to understand something. That that doesn't mean that to cast out that demon, you need to go pray and fast to cast out the demon or to cast out or to have that miracle happen. That's not what that verse is saying. That means you need to have a life of prayer and fasting. When you live a life of prayer and fasting, then when you encounter those type of spirits, no problem. Jesus didn't go into a prayer and fast to cast out that demon. But Jesus lived a life of prayer and fasting. And he recognized. See, that's why I said it's a disclaimer. Because you have to understand. You have your belief and your relationship with God. 
But you want to move those mountains that we read that verse before? You want, you want to really truly see those things? You got to have a life of prayer and fasting. And that's the difference. When you have a life of prayer and fasting, your connection with God. Because we read that you can do what? Everything if you believe. Everything. But what's the degree of your belief? The degree of your belief is the degree of your relationship. There's a difference. Between having Bill Gates stand up here and say, I'm going to give you the money. And you having his credit card. When, you, when you're with God, when you live a life of prayer and fasting, that power flows through you constantly. It's not a matter. See, we... We, we live our lives and then we come to a situation and then we connect with God. We get to that situation and then we say, hey, God, I need your help. Can you send some power down because I need this situation to be fixed? And we're looking for God to do a miracle at this moment. But when you live a life of prayer and fasting, that's constantly there. You say, God, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. In the name of Jesus, that situation is taken care of. The evil spirit, you have to leave. With Paul, it says that they had a handkerchief that the, with just the, it, it says the anointing that Paul had, they would use a handkerchief. Some people don't even know what that is anymore. It's a little piece of fabric, okay, that people used to put, you know, okay. And just that little fabric, because Paul had it, the anointing over him was so strong that when they would take his handkerchief and people would get healed by it. Because the anointing, because of his, his prayer life, because of his fasting life, because of the relationship that God had on him, it saturated everything he had. Can you imagine? It saturated his clothing. That just with that, people would get healed. People would see miracles. I pray that we get back to that belief. That we get back to that belief. That that anointing, that type of anointing will flow again. In this area. Because it's flowing in other areas. You know what that's called? Revival. That's called revival. We need a revival. We need a revival. We want to see miracles. We want to see the hand of God working we need revivals in areas where you see revival happening it's not in the walls of the church it saturates the town in areas where there's revival you will see In Toronto, Florida, great example. In the high schools, they had a room, separate room in the high school 
for kids who would fall under the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who would be so drunk in the Spirit, who, who are so overcome by the presence of God that the, the other students would carry them to this room. That the principal designed specifically for those situations. You'd go to the gas station. And in the gas station when they would go in, they'd see people on the floor. And they'd ask the clerk, what's going on? Oh no, that's normal. That's the presence of God that just fell upon them. Don't worry about it. How much gas do you need? When God starts to saturate through our lives because we believe in the word, we believe in the presence, we believe in the power, things start to change. We need to walk on a word, and that word is Jesus. We need to believe and understand that everything that he did, we can do. Everything he did was a teaching moment for us to let us know that we can do the same thing. You know, there was, I'll leave you with this. Because people, you know, it's like that guy says, God, help me with my unbelief. Everyone here has heard, has, knows the story of Jonah, right? And that Jonah got swallowed by a whale. And that Jonah got spit up again. And people would say, that's impossible. There's no way that that happened. Do you know on the southern part of Africa, a man last week was swallowed by a whale and taken and spit up on the shores? They have the video. You can see it. Google it later. <laughs> when they told me, that's what I did. I Googled it. So the, I'm like, are you kidding me? And you see the video, and then they have the, the, the picture. Because the guy, he was... Uh, there was some type of uh, stream where, where there's a lot of the little fish or whatever, and it's very dangerous. There's a lot of sharks that come up, and he was filming, and they were filming and everything. And he was more worried about the sharks. And before he knew it, he felt himself inside the whale. And they actually have videos of his feet sticking out of his the whale's mouth before he completely went in. Help me in my unbelief. Don't tell me what God can do and what he can't do. My God can do everything. There's nothing my God can't do. Nothing. Let's believe. Let's trust in God. Whatever you're going through, maybe you know somebody who's going through something. Pray over that person. Believe that God can do a change. And do the same thing that this man said. What Jesus said to the man. When you pray over somebody, in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray over the situation. But I want you to believe. And if you're having trouble believing, I want you to ask God to help you in your unbelief. Because we have to understand that there is a key factor, which is our faith. We have to believe. Let us stand.